So let's talk about models and what they are. So let's roll things back to when ARPANET was created. ARPANET was created in 1969 and it was designed for, computer, for networking computers, networking devices. ARPANET stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, ARPANET, and it was designed mainly for academics. So academic machines could be communicating and we could pass on academic information. And I also actually had some military application as well. So as the popularity of this grew, more and more college, colleges jumped on this, more and more machines, more and more networks jumped on this, as well as the protocols were being developed and more and more protocols came in to advance the type of communication that was happening. And so what was happening is there's lots of advances in this, and there was a need to create a model to create some structure on how we developed this technology. And obviously, as these networks grew, so did other countries using this same technology. But they were being developed in separately in some of these different countries, and there was a need to communicate between countries. And so the International Organization for Standardization decided to create a layer system, a model that, that you could develop technology and still have some standardization so that way communication can happen from country to country and between these different protocols. And so in 1984, the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO for short, uh, created this model to help facilitate the growth of these networks and facilitate developing these technologies. So they developed the OSI model or the Open Systems Interconnection Model. The Open Systems Interconnection Model is made up of seven different layers. And so you can see the different layers here. We have the application layer. We've got the presentation layer. We've got the session layer. We have the transport layer. We have the network layer. We have the data link layer. And then we have the physical layer. And so there's different protocols that operate within each one of these layers. And what this model allows us to do is develop a certain protocol and it still communicates that we don't have to develop all the protocols at the same time because there's an understanding of how that protocol is going to interact with the protocols before it and the protocols after it. And so there's a, there's a certain st standardization now that's happening of how we can develop a layer but still then communicate up or down and not disturb the rest of our protocols. Um, and so what you see here is you see the different layers here, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical layers. And those are all layers of the, o of the OSI model. So it's a little unique how these, system, these layers are numbered because the first layer is the physical layer. The second layer is the data link layer. The third layer is the network layer and so on and so forth. So fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh layer. We've got these seven different layers. But from a perspective of how things get built, it actually re works in reverse. We build layer seven first. Layer seven is the application layer. And so your computer actually starts out with building the application layer, moving through the presentation layer and through the session, transport, network, data link, and then the physical layer is actually sending the data over to the other side. And when the other side gets this, when the device on the other side gets this, it has to deconstruct this. And so it knows that it goes back up through the layers to deconstruct this to get the message. And so each one of these uh, layers, what it does is it's taking the data and it's manipulating or changing it or adding something to it. Um, it's doing some sort of uh, mechanism within here to, um, to, uh, to build what's gonna be sent across to the other side and then it has to be deconstructed on the other side. Let me just give you an example of this is the network layer has the IP address on it. And so at that layer, we're going to add 
the IP address on it as well as some other information. When it gets over to the other side, to the other computer, and it's deconstructing that, then it gets to that layer three network and it needs to check to make sure that IP address is addressed to itself. And so then that's what it does is it checks it and then verifies that it's actually addressed to this other machine. So now the advantage to this is that the transport layer is going to form, it's going to manipulate the data in a certain way and hand it off to this layer three. Hey, like my videos? Hit that like button. And now what we can do is we were, uh, we for a long time we've used IP version four and IP version six now has come out. And so that way we have IP version six, that way of passing that information off doesn't have to change. The layer three just needs to deal with the, its functionality and what it needs to do, the actions it needs to perform, but version six is going to do it in a much better way. And then it passes it on to layer two. And so each one of these layers can be developed separately without disturbing the other layers. And that's what's going to advance technology and allow technology to grow.